If you've ever wondered how you could make your own artwork for a spiral bound calendar like this one, you're in the right place here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. Okay, so here I am in InDesign. Of course, I need a new document to work with. So Command or Control N to create a nice new document. And the page size I'm after is A4. Of course, yours may be slightly different, and that's just fine. And you can vary everything I do here to suit your own needs. I'm going to make this landscape, and I'm going to turn off facing pages just here. Okay, I want them as single sheets. So I'll click Create, like so, and my document is now ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is to set up a master page for the calendar itself. So for the pages that have a calendar layout on, I'm going to do that master page. So I'll go first of all to the master page by using the go to page shortcut, Command J, A for the A master, and hit OK. You'll know you're there because down at the bottom of the document window, it will tell you that you're in the A master, which is another place you can use to get to that, as you can with the pages panel as well if you need to. Okay, so let's set up some margins just here. Now, the numbers I'm using are completely arbitrary, okay, based on what I want to do just here. But you can work out your own numbers or get numbers from someone who's helping you to make the calendar. So I'm going to change the margins here. So I'll go up to the layout menu and down to margins and columns. Now, these are all linked at the moment. So I want to unlink all of those so I can operate them independently. And the first one here, the top, I'm going to change that quite a bit. I'm going to make that around about 42 millimeters here. Of course, if you're using your own units, then go ahead. Down at the bottom, I'm going to increase that to 15 millimeters there. OK, to make a bit of room for the little hole that goes in that you use it to hang on the wall. And then I'm going to hit OK. I'm then going to bring in a guide and I'll bring mine into about 15 millimeters somewhere in that region. There we go. Exactly in that region. And that again is area for the binding to go across the top of the page. Perfect. Now I've got those two things done, I can start to actually put some master page items on the page. And the one I want to do is the month. So I'll tap T here to get my type tool, and I'm going to drag a text box across here like so. I'll move it in just a moment. Okay. I'm then going to have this center aligned, so I'm going to use the shortcut Shift Command or Shift Control C to center align. And then I'm going to type September here like so, because that's generally the one that's widest as it's set. So I'll just select all of that and then start to style it just a little bit. Now, I'm not really going to bother choosing uh, any fonts or anything while we're doing this. I'm just going to do some size things here for this. So I'll take this out to about 40 points. Pretty good. I think that works quite well. I'm then going to create a paragraph style with this. So I'll go ahead and click the Pilcro here in the properties panel. Or you could also go to the paragraph options here in the control strip. Okay. And choose new paragraph style from there as well if you wanted to. So I'm going to call this one what it is, which is the month there, like so. Okay. And I'm going to apply this style to the selection. I don't want to add this one to my library, but if you did, then go ahead, be my guest. OK, the basic character formats here are OK. Uh, and the only other thing I'm going to do here is just make this slightly less than black. So I'm just going to add this as a tint of about 80 percent. Again, of course, your design choices will be your own. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit escape OK, to come out of the type tool. And I'm going to drag this up to the top here. OK, so it's in that place there like so. And I'm going to just change the options for the text frame. So Command B or Control B is the quickest way to get to the text frame options. And down in the vertical justification area, I'm going to change the alignment there 
to center. Now again, this is just a preference, but it's the way that I typically do that. Now that that is set up, what I can do now is go back to page one in my layout. So command J one is the quickest way to get there perhaps. And now I need a new text frame. So I can go ahead now and get the type tool again. This one's going to go from margin to margin, like so, just across there. Perfect. And then I'm going to insert a table. I'm going to do that straight away. So I'll go table, insert table. And what I want here is I want six body rows. Uh, I want seven columns, one for each day of the week. And I want one header row just here as well. OK, I'll click OK and the table will be drawn. Now I'm going to go ahead and type uh, just the days of the week into all of these different frames. I'm just going to use letters for the purpose of this example. OK, and there we go. That's all of our days of the week. Now I could also create a paragraph style for those. Now you don't need to select anything to create a paragraph style, of course. You can just be clicked anywhere in that paragraph. So I'll go either over to the properties panel here and choose uh, to create a new paragraph style from there or in the control strip and choose new paragraph style just there. So I'm going to call this one weekdays like so. And I'm going to base it on month, which means if I want a consistent font throughout the calendar, OK, I'd only need to change it inside of the month here and then the styles using that would inherit it. So I'll go down to the basic character formats and I'll change the size of the weekdays and hopefully we should be able to see that just about there like so. So I'll bring this down to something more reasonable. Let's go with maybe 25 points. That, that's fine. Normally you design a kind of hierarchy to go with this, of course. I'm just eyeballing everything here for you at the moment. All right, so I've got that down to 25 just there. The other thing I might do is I might change the alignment here, although I think that's kind of good in the center. So I'll hit OK. Now I could then select all of these uh, cells just here. I could create a new cell style for the table. So let's go ahead and do that. If I click here and choose new cell style, I'll call this header there like so. OK, I don't need to do anything there apart from choose the paragraph style weekdays like so. That then becomes something if they change, then it will go ahead. And these at the moment are overriding, by the way, what I've got in there, but they would change uh, accordingly. So what I'm going to do here is just group all of those things together like so or select them all together and then I'll go ahead and apply my paragraph style. Now how do I do that without the interface showing me that? Well here's the trick. Hold down command or control and hit return. Okay that will get you the quick apply dialog and if you start to type week there you'll see weekdays becomes highlighted. You can then hit return and they all change like so. Nice handy trick to have and there's so many other things that you can do with that as well. Next I'm going to select all of these body rows and start to work on the sizing here. So I'll go up to the sizing options. This is why I like the control strip for this by the way, it's really handy for that. And then I'll click in this field and just using my up arrow key, I'm just going to increase that until it comes down to meet the bottom. There you go, I've gone too far. You can see it's jumped up a row there, the bottom of the page. Now I could go ahead and put some decimals in there. So if I put, for example, 23.5, let's have a look at that. Not too bad, actually. Let's try that at 23.7. And there we go. I think for the purposes of this, that will be just fine. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create yet another paragraph style. So I'm just going to type the numbers 88 in here just for now, right? Because there isn't an 88, okay, in any month that I know of, unless it's the 88th of Tone Vember, of course, which is equally possible in my world. So I'm going to do that. One final paragraph style here. Okay, so I'll go ahead, create a new paragraph style. 
and this one's going to be called date, like so. Again, I'm going to base it on month, so that will change there like so, but I want to change the formats. So let's drop this down to something more realistic. I think about 30, maybe just a bit lower than that. 27, I think, is pretty good just there. So that's all fine. Uh, maybe I'll change the alignment here to right aligned. There we go. I think that will be perfect. Of course, you could have it wherever you want it to be. The only other thing I want to do here now is to go down to bullets and numbering. And I'm going to create a list. OK, so the list type is going to be numbers just here. So you can see now I've got a little list thing going on there. OK, and what I want to do is go into this number field. Now, these are code for different things. The first one is a number. OK, the second one is a period just there. And the last one is a tab. So I'm going to delete that and delete the period just there. OK. And that should be fine. I think I could change the alignment for that if I wanted to, but I think it's OK uh, left as it is. The cell will align there like so. And then I can click OK because I've got the style that I need. Now, here's what's really important. You need to delete that 88 from there. You need to get rid of it. And then we're going to select all of the body rows there like so. OK, and then go ahead and create another cell style. So we'll call this one dates there. And the paragraph style we're going to use is date. OK, so everything else is just fine. There, We've got some options for text. We could set an inset. We'll do that uh, in just a moment. We can't see anything just for the minute. So we'll leave it as it is. Let's go OK on that. Then click in the first cell here and tap the space bar. So there's no other character there other than the space, but it's still generating the list number. So what we can do is we can go ahead and double click the space to select it. OK, you might even have to drag across the space like so. It will be a bit fiddly, but you'll be able to do it. OK, copy that. And then what we'll do is we're going to keep that on the clipboard. Now we can delete anything that's in that cell at the moment. So it's back to being empty. Although if you did want to do your alignments, you could keep it there. Go back to the cell style. So hold down command or control and hit the slash key to select that cell. You don't need to select them all for this one. Go ahead and apply the dates style there and choose style options. So we can do a few things now with the text. OK, we can change the alignment here to align bottom. We'll turn preview on so we can see that happening. We can put a little bit of an inset. Let me just unlock these down at the bottom just to bring that away there slightly like so there you go that's looking pretty good so we'll hit OK so now we've got that cell just there all we need to do is hold down command or control and hit slash to select the cell copy it then go ahead and select all of the rows like so okay and if you paste you'll see that they all fill up with numbers so we're part of the way there What we need to do now is we need to go ahead and add some more rows to this table. So there's a few different ways we could do that. But the easiest way, I guess, is to go to the table menu, come down to insert and choose row. All right. What we're then going to do is add 48 rows. You can add more than that if you want, but you'll end up deleting some at the end. Uh, I'll wager. Hit OK. And now we've got a whole stack of extra rows in here. Now we're going to go ahead and select all of our body rows. OK, so here in select in the table menu, choose body rows and then paste. Now we've got all of our cells in there with that. In fact, if you wanted to make sure they were all clear, you could actually hit delete. OK, and then paste to make sure because sometimes People have done that and they end up with duplicate numbers, but that will resolve that. Now go back to your selection tool and go ahead and click on the outflow port 
for the text here and that will load into the container. Now the main frame should still be selected so hit delete to get rid of it. Bring your cursor up to the top of your margins like so. Hold down the shift key which takes us into auto flow mode and click. And what you'll see now is that you've got a whole load of pages here. Don't worry about the numbers. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about just there. Okay, but you've got all of the pages you need. Now we can start to actually work on the calendar. So first of all, I'm going to change the month name here. And if you remember, this is on a master page. So hold down Shift and Command. That would be Shift and Control on Windows and click. That overrides the master page item. You can then go ahead and change the name, okay, for this page. Now let's, for argument's sake, say that the 1st of January on our particular year is on a Wednesday. So I'm going to go ahead to the first two cells here, okay, and delete the contents. Okay, so that takes us through to that. There's 31 days in January, so I can go ahead and get the other cells here and clear them. I can then move down to the next month. So again, what we'll do is hold down Shift and Command or Shift Control, click on that item, okay, and we'll call this one February. Don't worry, we're not doing uh, all 12 months and we're spelling some of them properly as well. There you go, you never know. Okay, I've <laughs> still managed to spell it incorrectly which is fantastic. There we go, February, <laughs> like that. Now, of course, on January the 31st was on a Friday. That means Saturday is the 1st of February. So we can clear out everything before that. All right. And then at this point, we need to right click and choose restart numbering. Okay, so we can then come down to the 28th. Of course, usually the last day in February, but of course every four years, slightly different. So we'll just go ahead and clear those. And then you'd carry on doing that until you'd worked your way through the whole year. So how do we get in then those pages with the pictures on? Well, this is how it works. We're going to zoom out slightly here so you can see uh, that we have indeed got all of the pages. And we'll just zoom back in on those pages. Now we can go to our pages panel here. And at the top of the pages panel on the right hand side, I'm going to create a new master. Okay, this is going to have the prefix B. Okay, and I'm going to call it image. Just there, you can call it whatever you like, but that's fine. I'll call it image. And I'm going to stick with everything else there and hit OK. So I now have a new master page. And this is one where we need to kind of do the reverse setup of what we had before. Okay, so in this particular case with the margins, if you needed them, okay, you'd do the reverse. You'd make the bottom margin deeper. But I'm not going to do that. All I'm going to do here is drag in the guide. So if I had, I think, 15 millimeters on either side, I think it was actually just there, then I'd add guides at those particular places and I think that's what the margin is just here anyway but you can figure that out it's pretty straightforward now you've got that you can go ahead and you can go to page one in your pages panel okay and then you can do the command shift command p or shift control p okay which will add you a new page and then you can drag your b master onto that page okay you can repeat that process, okay, and place your image pages wherever you want. You'll see if I drag them up in the stack, wherever you go, they'll be placed usually on the page after. So Shift Command P, go to the next one, Shift Command P, go to the next one, Shift Command P, and so on until you've got all of the pages necessary for you to go and put your images on. And if I zoom out again, you can see that's now ready. Now, if you're sending this to a commercial printer, you need to talk to them first about your artwork because they will have special requirements, doubtlessly, for their process. And if it's for an online service, check what templates they have as well. But if you're making one at home or at school or at college for your own purposes, you're going to print the whole thing out yourself, then you now know how you can be in complete control 
over building your own calendar and make your own spiral bound image layout. We're done for now, but please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo. See ya.